Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 16, The Living Room Pad. Well, welcome, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim, and I'm your host of this show, and this week, we will be talking about the living room and the iPad. What role will it play in the living room, and how will it become sort of a community family device more so than in the past with iPhones and iPods as they're more personal devices? Will this iPad be a more shared device with multiple users and multiple use cases for your use in the living room? So we'll talk about all that today. I've got some voicemail to play back as well today. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. Before we do, I want to recognize some sponsors of the show right now. Well, I am very proud to announce and very excited to announce that this podcast, the iPad Possibilities podcast, now has a show sponsor. And that is the software development house or company, Jindanzi. As you remember, Sunday night, John joined us. He actually is one of the founding members of Jindanzi. And they have an iPhone app called It's On My Way. And we'll be talking about that throughout the next uh, month or two. And with that, we'll just be giving different use cases of that app and just letting you know how it can make your life better as you're traveling about. It's On My Way is an app that helps you basically help you plan a route, plan where you're going to go. I know this has happened to me many times on my iPhone, I've been trying to find how to go from point A to point B to point C to point D. And the only way I found to do that was to get the expensive TomTom app. And I'm sure there's some other apps that do this. But with this app, it's only $2.99. It enables you to plan out a route to hit all your different errands in the most effective way you can, save you time, save you gas money, all of that by just being more effective in your traveling. It's called It's On My Way. It's on the App Store for $2.99. And we'll have information on that app on the Possibilities Network very soon here. And I wish to thank Jindanzi and John for putting that all together and sponsoring this show. And most especially, they'll be sponsoring the trip Saturday. They'll be funding that trip, so that will enable me to travel to Cincinnati to join Ryan, who is my co-host for the Sunday show. And we'll be basically spending a whole day on the iPad. It's the release of the iPad this Saturday. And we'll be doing live video streaming all day, starting very early before dawn, probably. And throughout the day, Ryan will have an iPad delivered to his house. And we'll be doing many live shows there. And we'll also be visiting the local Apple store, doing interviews and all sorts of great things pretty much all day long. So join us there. Just go to the possibilitiesnetwork.com to get information about that live uh, live streaming day with the iPad release. And just go to jindanzi.biz to find out more information about our new sponsor. Once again, I wish to thank you guys at Jindanzi for sponsoring this show, the iPad Possibilities Podcast. This show is also supported by the iPad Possibilities Podcast app, found in the App Store for $2.99. And with that app, you get the shows 24 hours in advance, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, instead of Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Grab it today in the App Store for $2.99. Well, it's time to move on to the meat of this show, and that is the living room pad. Will the iPad become a shared device, a living room device for many households. I believe it will. And one scenario I was thinking about is the need for the Apple TV. I own an Apple TV. I love the Apple TV. It's a great device. It enables me to simply have my laptop at the house and simply stream video to my television set quite easily. It's basically a big iPod for your television set. And it works great. It's fantastic for what it does. But Apple has not really been keeping up with updating it and things like that, and I thought of the possibility of the iPad as a replacement device for the Apple TV. They're very different in what they do, but there are solutions, I think, that will appear that will make the iPad into a replacement device for the Apple TV, and the biggest, biggest scenario I see for this is Air Video. I believe Aero Video will have an iPad version of their app. And I've been playing with this app 
very recently. I started playing with it a couple weeks ago. And what it does, we've talked about this app in the past. This app, you basically run a server on your laptop or desktop computer, Mac or Windows. And what it'll do, you can place as many directories as you want of videos on that app. So basically, you can have your entire iTunes library of videos in that directory. You can have other directories of videos that aren't even supported by iTunes, like AVI files and all sorts of other files that Apple cannot play back on their devices. And what this app does is on the Mac itself, it'll transcode into a format that you can play on your iPad or iPhone. And it does this in a very quick manner. I'm using this on my Mac Mini, and it transcodes that video really fast, really well, and gives you a great quality for that streaming service. It does this really quickly, really fast. The, everything is just fantastic about this app. It advertises what it does, and it does what it says it's going to do, and that's a big plus. It's a great app, and the biggest case I can see for this as an Apple TV replacement is say you connect your iPad to your television set via the VGA cable or the component cables, and you have a long cable that you're able to control your iPad from your couch and simply play video as you need and also play audio as you need and things like that. But this eliminates the need for you to sync your iPad to your computer. This is a big limitation that was there in the past. You need to sync video to your phone or iPad. And with video, that takes up a lot of space. Even with 64 gigabytes, that won't be enough for a lot of people. A lot of people have terabytes of video. So what do you do? How do you do this? How do you access all that video and have the selection that you want without having to think before you do that? Well, with Air Video, you'll be able to do that. And that's going to be one very exciting use case of the iPad, simply using it as your media center device for your living room that any family member will be able to just grab the iPad, play whatever video they want to play, and simply enjoy your content through that medium. And before we move on, I simply wanted to play back a voicemail message that I received about Air Video and his experiences with it and the potential in the iPad Air Video. So I'm going to play that for you now. Hi, Tim. This is Jamie from Canada. I was thinking that uh, since Apple is positioning the iPad to be supplementary to uh, a home PC, I thought it would be cool uh, to use your home PC as a media server and use something like Air Video on the iPad with the upcoming uh, dock connector to VGA, VGA connector to uh, display media content on the TV uh, if you have a TV compatible with VGA input. Uh, this way, the iPad will completely... Uh, replace the need for uh, an Apple TV around the house. And I thought it was cool since uh, Air Video allows the user to uh, set conversion quality as far as uh, sound and, and video go. Uh, you could possibly uh, avoid the blowing up of the iPad resolution to your TV and set a higher resolution when you're, uh, when you're about to use your TV to watch movies and stuff like that. Anyway, I just thought that was cool and uh, wondered what you thought on that. And uh, enjoy the show. Bye. I wish to thank Jamie for sending that comment in, that voicemail in. As always, you can send your your voicemails at 209-542-IPAD and have an opportunity, opportunity to be on the show as well. And I just wanted to throw in a couple additional additional thoughts here. I was thinking, as far as video playback, that the iPad will one day become that unified media device. It'll have access to all the stuff on your computer that you own. It'll also have access to things that you don't own, like Netflix. I believe one day Netflix will have their app on the iPad that'll stream video, movies back to it. Hulu will one day have an app. That's one thing people are griping about is no Hulu right now. There's no Flash on the iPad. And they're not complaining about there's no Flash. They're complaining about there's no Hulu. That's the one big thing. And I believe one day they'll have that. And one day the iPad will become this unified media device. You'll have access to all your music, all your videos and movies on this device. You'll have access to all of your publications and everything will be on your iPad. 
It'll be that media consumption device that unifies it all into that one area. And it'll be great for the living room as your family needs a playback, whatever they need to playback. And it'll do this in a very wonderful user interface way that so far has not been matched by set-top boxes except for, I believe, Apple TV. And TiVo does an excellent job with the user interface. So those are just some closing thoughts as far as an Apple TV replacement with the iPad. Well, the next question you might be asking is, what else do you do in the living room? I hope that you don't just simply watch TV and movies and listen to music while you're there. I hope you you know, interact with your family in other ways. So I'm going to be exploring those ways uh, right now. And the first way I was thinking about are coffee table books. Every family room has some coffee table books that you have just laying around. I think the iPad will be a great device to have, you know, coffee table books. Books that you can just open up and start browsing through, and they'll be great little coffee table book replacements through the iPad. Another use case I'm seeing is web browser, quick and easy access to the web. Right now, you need to do an use a laptop or an iPhone to simply get a simple fact, you know. So I see IMDb looking up uh, facts there. They'll have their iPad app out soon, and it'll be great. You'll be able to look up the quick facts that you need. You'll be able to we'll be seeing the merging of watching video and browsing the web at the same time with the iPad. It'll put content at our fingertips in a much more easy way, a much more accessible way than ever before. And we'll begin to even we'll begin to merge that experience of browsing the web and watching TV, watching movies, and we'll begin to merge that like we never have in the past. With a laptop, even there's a division there. You have the screen in front of you. It's up. It's prompt up. But with the iPad, it's just a pad, like a pad of paper that you simply hold in your hand. It'll be even more so of a merging merging of these content of this entertainment because with the iPhone, the screen's too small. It puts you in your own world with the iPhone because it's so small. You have to stay concentrated on that one area with the ipad it's a larger device it'll be a much more shared environment where you're able to enjoy your television set as well as your ipad at the same time and i believe the web browser is going to be one major use case of the ipad in the living room as a shared device email will come up that way as well people will instantly access their email through the ipad They might use the web app of Gmail to do this if it's a share device. I don't believe people will be sharing the same email account with a built-in mail. But I believe it'll become the perfect web sharing device for the living room. And it'll be a shared device that everyone can use. They'll just have a house iPad that just stays in the family room. One quick thought before we move on is remote applications for the iPad. As you know, Apple has their remote app for the iPhone, and it's a wonderful app that controls the Apple TV, but we're also seeing right now a big explosion in cases that have IR sensors built into them with applications that go along with it. I believe we'll see a similar explosion of apps that allow you to control your television set with your iPad. It'll be great because you've got your iPad in your hand as you're enjoying your content, And you won't need to grab that remote. You'll be able to do that all with your iPad. And it'll be a great use case simply remoting into your TV to control things. It'll be wonderful. And we'll begin to see the decline of third-party remote hardware devices being sold. And this will begin to eat into those sales with the iPad. Some other remote cases I could think of is automated house things like lights i could see there's already light apps for the iphone i will i I think we'll begin to see more house automated things like lighting and other things like that perhaps even the kitchen will become automated and have apps control that through the ipad so i see remote applications 
are going to have a huge explosion in the coming months as more and more people get their hands on the iPad. Now, the next aspect of the iPad that I see as a great living room device, a great share device, is when you need to gather at the end of the day and simply enjoy life and play games and just simply relax. And one great app I've been seeing coming about are board game apps. And there's one app in particular that I've found that will be an incredible app to have on every iPad. And it's called Game Table. And what Game Table is, is it's an app that is simply a game table, as it says. It'll have a deck of cards that you can have access to. It'll have checker pieces or chess pieces backgammon pieces and it will change the board depending on what you want to do so you can play literally any card game with this because you'll no longer be limited by the application instead it'll be just an environment an open environment in which you can interact with the pieces so there's no built-in movements. Instead, you simply control the pieces. You control those checker pieces and move them as you need to move them. And you control the cars as you need to move them. There's no built-in movements. Instead, it's simply you interacting with it all. And I'm going to be very excited to test this out, hopefully Saturday if it's out by then, and test this out. And it'll be a great app to simply interact and share a device to play a game on, to share a device to play cards on, to play checkers on, to play chess on. And I see one day to share a game of Scrabble on. Imagine having your iPhone there and your Scrabble pieces on your iPhone and you simply flick them out onto the iPad and play your game of Scrabble all on your iPad and iPhone. I see the shared environment of gaming is going to be much more prevalent with the iPad. And the living room pad will have a bunch of those games that you can simply take out that iPad and have a bunch of games at your disposal that are perfect for not single user mode, but multiple users. You'll all be able to simply sit around a table and play a game of cards, play new games that we haven't even thought of designed for the iPad. And I think that'll be a huge explosion that we'll, we've never seen before and it'll help us eliminate the need for physical games. We'll begin to see the need for less of that. And this will be great for those that have a cluttered life. We'll be The iPads, I'm seeing this with this episode in particular, the iPad's going to eliminate so much need for clutter in our lives. We'll be able to take this one device and have access to all the games, all the movies, all the music. Anything you need will be on this iPad. This pad will morph into whatever you need it for. It'll morph into eliminating the need for remote controls, eliminating the need for games, eliminating the need for pads of paper. It'll start eliminating the need for all these other things that you buy on a regular basis. And you'll do all of that on the iPad. And I think it's going to be wonderful. Simply decluttering your life, making it easier to move when you do move. You don't need to carry all that stuff with you anymore. You've got your iPad now, and that device will become become what you use for everything. And I think it's going to be incredible as it advances and more apps come out. This is going to be the next wave of how we interact with our entertainment, our content, and everything like that. And the iPad will be the major f- front runner of doing this. I wanted to throw in a couple of other use cases before we close this section of the living room pad. And one use case as demoed on stage by Steve Jobs is the digital picture frame. The iPad has built into it on the home screen a simple button that you click that will turn the iPad into a digital picture frame. And once again, this will eliminate the need to buy those devices. You can simply have it docked in and displaying your photos, your family photos, out there in the living room as you need them. So that's another de- another use case for the living room pad. 
Now, another big use case, a big, big use case I see is those discussions about where to eat. Yes, where to eat. It can take a long time for a big family to come to a decision about where do we want to go tonight? Where would we want to eat tonight? Where do we want? What do we want to do tonight? And the living room pad will become a great device for that. There's many apps on the iPhone already to help people decide where to eat. And the built-in Google Maps app is going to be even more prevalent with this iPad because the speed of the device, the size of the screen, it'll finally become useful in a real way. With the iPhone, it can take several minutes to get everything up and running and finding what you need to find. But with the iPad, it'll be instantaneous. You'll be able to find what you need to find. You'll be able to find what restaurants you want to go to. You'll be able to find all the entertainment you want to go to that night. And the living room pad will save the family a great deal amount of time as they make these decisions on a daily basis about planning out dinner, planning about where they want to go that night, and it'll be a great device for that. A great device simply to plan out your night. And I could also see a unified calendar for the family on the iPad. You have this shared device, this iPad, and you have each person has their Google Calendar, right? And they could have it all syncing to the iPad simply to view everyone's calendar so everyone knows where they're at that night what they're doing that day and it eliminates the need to call everybody what are you doing this day when can we meet for dinner or do all those sort of things and you can have a unified calendar for your family finally you can also have unified notes for your family instead of writing scribbles on sticky notes by the phone you can instead simply have the notes the built-in notes app as the memo app that everyone goes to the check messages of the day and i see using the shared information on the ipad will become a great use case as the living room pad the living room ipad advances through the years so that's one great use case i could see for the living room ipad so that concludes the meat of this episode on the living room iPad. As always, please send your feedback to 209-542-iPad. That's 209-542-4723 for those without the alphabetical uh, keyboard there. And send in your voice comments. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the living room iPad. I'm sure I left out a bunch of things that I could have included that just didn't come to my mind. But what do you guys do in the living room each night? And what will the iPad now do to replace much of those needs? Send that feedback back. I'd love to hear from you guys as far as what you guys are planning on doing with the iPad as far as are you going to be getting a shared iPad for your family to use and will it become this living room iPad that you'll, your family is going to be able to share all the media, all the information basically between your family with this iPad. So send that comment, those feedback, those feedback back to me at two zero nine five four two iPad. And also, if you wish to email me, you can do that at iPadPossibilities at gmail dot com. And I'd also like to let everyone know about our plans for Saturday. As most people know, this Saturday, April third, is the iPad's release date, and through Jindanzi. I've been able to make plans and travel to Cincinnati, Ohio, where my co-host on Sunday night, Ryan Anderson, lives. And he has the iPad pre-ordered. It will be delivered to his house that morning, hopefully. And we'll be doing a live unboxing. We'll be also going to the Apple store there in Cincinnati. And we will also be doing a bunch of different live shows that day. I'm not sure what kind of shows we'll be doing, but we'll be doing a lot of shows that day. And we'll be releasing those through. Throughout the next week, a day at a time, and we'll have a bunch of new content for you through that uh, day, through Saturday, and all the shows we do that day. And if you wish to join us, I'd love to have you guys watch us live on Saturday. We'll be streaming live video through multiple iPhones all day long through AT&T's 3G access and Ustream. 
And it will be on the same channel that you guys catch the live show every Sunday night. So if you go to the thepossiblesnetwork.com and go to the iPad Possibilities Podcast and just simply go to the live show, you'll have the chat room there for you and the video stream for you there. It will be on and off all day. I'll try to get a schedule more narrowed down as we approach Saturday. But just join us there Saturday to catch all the latest action and latest footage of the iPad as it finally becomes a real device. If you wish to support the show, you can do that in one of many ways. Simply uh, first subscribe in iTunes. That helps our numbers get up and helps us be more visible to iTunes and letting other people experience this show for the first time. Also, if you could leave a review, I would really appreciate it. That's a great way to support this show, one of the best ways to do that. And it helps other people see the show as well and hear your guys' feedback. And I appreciate all of those reviews that you guys leave. If you could just spend a couple of minutes this day and leave a review, that would be a major help. I really, really appreciate it. Also, if you uh, want to support the show, as I said earlier, just leave a voicemail message at 209-542-IPAD. And send me an email at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com. And if I financially support this show, you can do that in one of a couple different ways. First, the iPad Possibilities podcast app is available in the App Store for $2.99. And the biggest feature of that app is you get the show 24 hours in advance, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, instead of Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And you can also donate to the show at thepossibilitiesnetwork.com. Just go to the iPad page, scroll down. And it's under the Helps Him Buy an iPad section. And I really appreciate all donations that the show gets. They go to good use in bringing you the latest and greatest content. Also, support our sponsors at Jindanzi by going to the App Store and purchasing the It's On My Way app for $2.99. We'll have some more use cases for that app next week. So I wish to thank you for supporting this show. And those are, those are the ways you can do it. So I wish to thank everyone for tuning in this week to the iPad Possibilities podcast. We will speak again on Friday or Saturday, depending on when you get the shows. I'll be doing a weekly thought on right before when the iPad comes out. And then please join us on Saturday. I'd love for as many people as could to join us on our live video streaming all day long as the iPad is out. I'd like to simply cover it as much as I can Saturday. It's going to be a great, fun-filled day. And thanks to Jindanzi with the It's On My Way app, we'll be able to bring you live coverage all day Saturday. And it'll be a fantastic day. And I wish you guys could join us on Saturday. So until Saturday, this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast.